Oh uh, yeah, I have sent it to Guinea. Remember to look up at the stars and not at your feet. Try to make sense of what you see. Good morning, everyone. Remember to look up at the stars and not at your feet. Try to make sense of what you see and wonder about what makes the universe exist. And however difficult life may seem, there is always something you can do and succeed at. It matters that you don't just give up. These were the words of one of the greatest scientists of our times, Stephen Hawking. And what better day than today to be quoting him? Principal Madam Dr. Shrija Unni Krishna, our chief guest for the event, Ms. Ipsita Bhattacharya, our Dean Students Affair, Dr. Deepak Boer, our event coordinator, Professor Kalpana Devrukkar, and Professor Saurabh Pulkarni, our teaching staff and non teaching staff watching us live on YouTube. A warm welcome to all of you at Father Concessa Roderick's Hackathon. My name is Vanessa DeMello, and I will be anchoring this edition of Unscript 2K22. Founded under the inspiration and guidance of Father Concessa Rodriguez in 1957, with just an orphanage and trade school and carpentry, a moment started 64 years ago. However, today, under the guidance of Admiral Ashram Fathers, it caters to full fledged schools industrial training centers, polytechnics, engineering colleges at the bachelor, postgraduate, and PhD levels. It is said that technology is best when it brings people together. It was on the occasion of the 60th anniversary of the Admiral Technical Complex that Father Concessa Roderick's College of Engineering hosted its first technical hackathon. This year, we are proud to host the fourth edition of our tech hackathon, Unscript. It was started with the sole motto of testing the technical limits of the brightest students and encouraging the new builders of our country. Our college shares the vision, molding engineers who can build the nation. And our college has come a long way in manifesting this into a reality. As said by Alex Kern, Hackathons are where your crazy ideas become reality. And indeed, Father Concessa Roderick's hackathon is less about winning and more about the spirit of learning, the spirit of testing one's limit, and rising above one's expectation. I would now request Principal Madam Dr. Srija Unikrishnan to share with us a few words of wisdom. Hello, yeah. Chief Guest and our alumni, Ms. Ispita Bhattacharya, HODs, Deans, Staff Members, Dr. Boyer, Dean Student Affairs, Prof. Kalpana Devrukar and Prof. Suthaurab Kulkarni, Event Coordinators, Organizing Team, Experts and Participants. A good, good morning and a very warm welcome to all of you to Unscript 2022, the second online edition of our National Level Hackathon. We, as uh, mentioned, we started this hackathon series with the objective of providing an excellent coding environment and platform to engineering students in line with our institute vision of molding engineers who can build a nation. In the current scenario where companies 
hire students through coding challenges hackathons give students the much needed head start to channelize their knowledge creativity and skill towards solving a problem working in a team round the clock to find the best optimal solution to a problem boost the reasoning and problem solving skills of participants so participants you will be working under pressure taking lead on some tasks sharing your know how and interacting with fellow students mentors and judges you need to also judge where to invest time how long to try and when to switch to a new solution altogether i am sure it will be a great learning and confidence building opportunities to all of you my compliments to our student chapters code labs and mozilla campus club in organizing unscript and the rookies hackathon in parallel reverend father valerian de sousa our local superior and director joins me in conveying best wishes to all the participating teams thank you Thank you, Principal Madam, for your best wishes. Our chief guest, Ms. Ipsita Bhattacharya, is the HR project manager at J.P. Morgan Chase and Co. She has extensive experience as a strategic HR professional in the company, and has a variety of HR roles in analytics, project management, recruitment, performance management, and is also an operations director of technology at Andhan Welfare Foundation. which is a food rescue organization serving more than 1 million meals so far i would now like ms ipsita bhattacharya to address the audience on this occasion thank you so much reverend father respected principal ma'am dr mrs shrija oni krishnan our respected dean dr deepak bhoyer our head of the departments esteemed teacher coordinators kalpana devrakar ma'am saurabh kulkarni sir esteemed faculty members technical and non technical staff and of course our dear students my name is ipsita and i am a very very proud crcite i cannot tell you how incredible this opportunity is for me to come back to my alumni here and talk so i am really blessed so thank you very much for giving me this opportunity we here at crc have come together through this wonderful initiative unscript 2022 and i am just here to talk about a few things that i have learnt through my experience of hackathons and if you know a few things would really help that would make me really understand that i am grateful a new commodity spawns a lucrative fast growing industry prompting anti trust regulators to step in to restrain those who control its flow a century ago the resource in question was oil now similar concerns are being raised by the giants that deal in data the oil of the digital era about 2.5 quintillion bytes of data are created every single day and i think i you know none of us would be surprised that this pace is only quickening that explosion of data is driving the industry that leverages it as organizations data collection grows in scope as well as sophistication it is inevitable that they'll want to make use of that data and programmers at this point are at the forefront of this trend we here at crc have been blessed with this opportunity to get out there and push ourselves to learn something towards this change to get more closer to being industry ready and there certainly cannot be a better time to do this so through what you know i have been uh, planning to share here is just some of my experiences and what has helped me so far i've participated in about seven different hackathons and some of them have been successful some have not been successful even in the later ones i have learned many different tricks and tips that have helped me perform better and led me to win as well so through this i will consolidate all those lessons that i wish someone had told me before my first hackathon but before that right i just want to explain a lot of us might be attending an event like this for the first time would have no no idea how is it that these things work so i just want to explain what is the concept of a hackathon 
it's typically a competition like this one that lasts for about 24 hours where you have small teams the sizes would somewhere be in the range of two to five. It totally depends on the organizing committee and they are solving a given problem. Now, in our case, a solving problem would be creating a prototype, creating a software product. After 24 hours, some of these finalist teams are going to be presenting their solutions. Presentation, I am not very sure what the format is, typically lasts between 5 to 10 minutes, which is why I'm also going to explain to you how can you use this opportunity to rule your presentation in such a short time. So let's get to Rumble, right? The first part and a very, very important part of your hackathon team selection is the first thing here is that the ideal team that you have that should consist of people with different skills and types of knowledge. Because when skills and knowledge vary, that's where diversity comes in. That's where magic happens. And it's certainly better if team members know each other. You need not have to know each other for years or months, but at least get familiar with each other because it will be easier for you to get into the flow, right? And very, very important thing, guys, your team has to work as one or else all bets are off. But don't forget to set up one member of the team in the leading position, more so as your representative. If you have to go somewhere, present an idea, pitch something, there has, there's got to be one person who's the face of the team, right? Not saying that the rest of the team members are not important, but just a representative that will really help you in getting your organization in a certain order. So that's the first thing I wanted to talk about. The second part comes for me, very, very important here, is your planning and preparation. They say, right, no battle plan survives contact with the enemy. So planning is good, but preparation is even better. So therefore, before the competition starts, you define this is the place where we are going to communicate. If the organization team has already created, well and good. Find the place that this is where we are going to share the files. Create that rhythm right? How are you going to exchange information? How are you going to communicate with each other? What are the points that are going to be needed for each one of you? So create that rhythm so nicely that throughout the next 24 hours, you don't struggle communicating. So that is really important when it comes to your preparation standpoint. Understand that we all hope for the fastest, but expect the slowest. Usually the internet sometimes gets slow. A lot of people are connected. There will be periods during the competition where you will not have access at all. It could be certain issues at your end, some light going off. We really don't know. These are a lot of unforeseen circumstances. So make sure that you have a backup plan for the internet. You don't want to create everything and you don't check in that information and you lose it right before. So be very, very sure of when and how and how frequently you're going to store the data. With pre-ready ideas and possible solutions for implementation, you will certainly gain some advantage even before you start. So plan in advance as much as you can. The third thing I want to talk about is brainstorming. Now, the hackathon has begun, okay? The topic of the hackathon is revealed that this is your, going to be your problem statement. And you know that, okay, so here's what I need to solve as a team. Everyone is excited and eager to start solving the task and to jump to code. In half an hour, you generate some ideas, some solutions, and hastily you give each team team member assignments and immediately start to work. No, a big no. This is probably the most common mistake that teams encounter when they're on the competition for the first time. It is impossible to find a good idea and define tasks for each member in half an hour. Brainstorm, define tasks. This entire activity needs to take about an hour if needed, even two if necessary. But make sure that you have all that done because that's very crucial. And these are things that, you know, they say, right, let's not rush to solve it. Let's slow down, pause, sit, and get everyone calibrated to be having a bigger kick when you eventually get working. And as you brainstorm, how do you do it, right? Try to generate as many ideas as you can, right? And write them on a list because 
it's very easy right we are all on a call we all we are all virtually connected it's very easy to say that i'll remember it but let's not do that we have 24 hours we have immense pressure we have deadlines we already have a clock ticking as i talk i can already feel the clock ticking at the back of my head that oh so in a few hours this is where they should reach so let's not do that let's just write it down on a list and remember that whatever you're working on whenever you're brainstorming you're working on a concept it does not have to be production ready there is no startup founder sitting out there who's going to launch your product in 24 hours so absolutely be you know try to not be anxious about it it's not going to be a fully tested product the best ideas that you need to be really working on are the ones that are simple yet innovative the next step while you brainstorm this would be to filter the ideas right because you have all the ideas you cannot really work on all of them i mean you really wish but but there are deadlines there are timelines so when you have fired all the ideas go through each idea and feature them on the list and then argue yourself how will you argue you could ask yourself certain questions does this idea solve a given problem that's given to me the second thing is this idea creative and innovative and third how much time is necessary for the implementation shall we and the fourth thing is should we present this idea because all of us do have a gut feeling we have these questions where we analyze we think we come up but we do have a gut feeling which tells us okay this is not going to work and this is going to work so trust that and here's a little bonus that one of my mentor had taught me is my idea or is my you know the solution that i'm offering is that a potential killer feature and the second is is this solution that i'm offering for the hackathon sufficiently innovative and different that it will make you stand out from the crowd you're not only looking at solving it which is your basic look at it as is this a killer feature is this going to make me stand out because come on we all want to win it right so think about all these things when you get out on those ideas the next thing that i would want to talk about is prioritize your features and define what your critical path is going to look like after you generate you filter the ideas the next step is you determine this the most important feature that you have give it the top priority and consequently keep coming down the less important features will have priority number 2 so that even if something fails later on you always have a reference that oh so this was on my priority 4 no worries let me go back to my priority 5 see if i can get that because let's face it we can't get everything right we can't get everything right all the time so let's make most of what we have in the time in the resources that we have next step i want to talk about and something that's really one of my favorite i actually love to write so for me it just gets even better prototype on paper you've done with your feature prioritization you have determined that this is the flow that you're going to follow you're going to make your critical path the next step is you make a quick application sketch on paper and talk in detail about how are you going to implement the features that you have chosen now why do you do this do you you'll be like do we have all the time can we not just start coding there is a reason why you do this first of all you get a small prototype of how is it that it is actually going to look so even you know not only so let's say one or two members in the team are actually prototyping now on paper of course we all are virtually connected we all have issues we have so many whiteboard options right where we could use this the rest of the team look at it as audience find you know just just look at it and uh, as a third person who's not connected and give your views right that is one advantage the other advantage is doing this all team members will know exactly what needs to be done and this is the step just before you hit implementation right all that's done you're done brainstorming you're done filtering you've prioritized and you certainly have your features what you're going to include in what order and who's going to do which assignment so it's time to code let the coding begin even as you code there are certain guidelines that i think have really helped me uh understand that every 2 to 3 hours take a break but break as in don't take like separate breaks come back take the break together for a short meeting what happens in the short meeting is 
make use of this opportunity where every team member gets to inform others. What do you inform? What have I implemented? Have I encountered a problem? What is my next assignment? What happens is you then get to know the small parts and how the story is developing. And then just to be very sure that you have to culminate eventually and form one product. So this is where it happens. Now, let's say there is a team member that gets stuck with a particular task. Whoever that designated leader is or anyone in your team should decide whether you want to continue with implementation or you want to just reject the feature. This is very important because you have a short duration of time and you don't want to waste too much time on a certain complex feature if it is not so important for the presentation. And if you feel that you can use this to compensate with other features. So just proceed to the next feature according to the previously defined feature priority list that you've already created. And please, I cannot emphasize on this. Remember that you are creating a prototype and not a product that has to be architecturally, per architecturally perfect and production ready. This is why you have to simplify things as much as possible and implement features to a level where they can be presented as a concept, right? So now everything's done. The product is ready. And although we all want to go to that last minute, right? It's that rush. I, I remember in college, we, we wanted to write our answers to the last minute. Sometimes the teacher had to stand okay, because, yeah, I mean, if they snatch the paper, we are writing you. Yeah? So let's not do that. So you do want to go to the last minute. I don't recommend you to do that. Leave that last one hour just for presentation preparation. You don't want to go out there and look blank about something that you have been working, right? You will There will be fatigue. There's going to be a lot of tension. You're all working together. But you want to just calm down in the last one minute, put your ideas, get your presentation right. 50% of hackathon winners are the ones who have de delivered a fantastic presentation. And these are stats. Go out there and check. 30% of usually the weightage comes on the ideas and 20% on the implementation. So please take your presentation seriously, right? Do not, do not ignore time for the preparation. Prepare all the tools that you will use during the presentation in advance. If you're going to screen share something, keep that open. If you're going to explain a flowchart, have that window open. Make sure you switching tabs has to be very, very flawless, right? I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with Murphy's Law, that if you know something can go, go wrong, it will go wrong. You may not have internet access during the presentation or some other system is going to break down. You don't know, right, what's going to happen. And you'll not be able to present this awesome product that you've created. So to avoid all this, you need to be prepared. You need to put that attention on the preparation. And when you give a presentation, right, it needs to have a story. It needs to have a beginning, it needs to have an end. In the beginning, you clearly explain what was the problem you were solving and how did you solve it? You may wonder, but the college only has given me the statement, right? They are the ones who are actually, they know what the problem statement is. No, in our presentation, it is your job to explain that and show what have you done to solve that. This is very, very important. Another thing is, do not stretch too much with theory and intro introduction. In hackathons, everybody is actually very excited to see the product. That, oh, okay, but, but show me what you have created. So understand that the audience really does not care about some theory and they will not remember it. Most of it they will actually forget what will really create an impact. Is the solution that you have created? Is your innovation? Is the creativity that you have come up? Right? So if you have a feature that you want to talk about, then think of the story and the context in which you can place that feature. Make a story that's going to be different from others and show them what you have done in the most creative and memorable way. If your presentation, I'm just giving an example here. If it's a 10 minute presentation, keep one or max two minutes for the introduction and explaining what the solution is. Seven minutes to show what you have done and you still should leave the last one minute to conclude and finish, right? Another thing here, a lot of us get into this habit of we start talking about the technology that we have used or we give a technical background of everything. Let's not do that. The solution here is that, you know, 
I'm not saying that we shouldn't at all talk about it, but let someone explicitly ask you. Explain all these things after the presentation. Let's say if, if the jury is asking you a certain question on this, but focus on what you as a team have created, right? That is your creation in the last 24 hours. It's like your baby. You go out there and showcase that, right? Another thing that I have noticed, another tip that I wanted to share is a lot of times uh, students are usually nervous. So they go and say that we did not implement feature X. We could not implement feature Y, hence we did, uh, you know, feature Z. You know, it really, it doesn't matter what you could not implement. It's a great win. And like we know that for CRC, it's extremely important. How do you come together? It is the participation. It is your willingness. It is that which has always mattered. So go out there and show what is it that you have done and what was your idea behind it so that for crc is is very very important right i want to give you a thought that you know in all these hackathons i've honestly certain areas you've reached the semis certain you've reached the finals i've not won any of the hackathons right and but but i still make it a point to go back and participate in these because the kind of invaluable experience and motivation that you get for your further development and advancement cramped in 24 hours, it's very difficult to get somewhere else. So I dare each one of you to give your best in this hackathon and watch out for other upcoming hackathons that are coming. Go and apply for that. Use this time that you have to go out there, build this product. Meet the people that you have in your groups. Create this community of like-minded people. This network is really, really going to help out, right? But we all know there's lack of time. You know, what if the product does not succeed? What if something goes wrong? What if we fail? But how will you ever know the result until you actually get to work? right so start right now give your 100 percent to this prototype this product that you are creating focus on exceeding your personal goal every single hour as you move through this hackathon don't look at oh that team has achieved this much and the other team has done this no you are the only one who you should compare yourself with work with your team Con do not consider your team as a competition right and as i say that i just want to sign off as a very, very proud CRCI, but I certainly am very disappointed. This opportunity was not there in my time. So I really wish I could go back in time and make the most of it. So all the best to all the teams and all the best to the organizing team. And thank you everyone for calling me and making me a part of this wonderful initiative. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am, for enlightening all the young minds present here. The advice will surely help all our participants. It's a great honor to have you here. I would now brief on the event flow and structure. This is the second year in which Unscript Hackathon has two banners under our name, a mixed hackathon for all students from technical colleges and a rookies hackathon, which is specifically for second year students to encourage more young budding coders in their second year to get an experience of how hackathons takes place. Let's unveil the problem statement. Next slide. The first problem statement of the mixed hackathon is a hackathon management platform. And the domain is both web and app development. Next.
Sorry for the inconvenience. The second problem statement of the mixed hackathon is building a mathematical model using ML and signal processing concepts to process the skin issues into dryness and oiliness. This domain is machine learning and AI development. Next. The third problem statement of the mixed hackathon is to build a user verification system. The students will be using the blockchain technology for building the system. Next. The fourth problem statement is an open innovation problem. The teams can build any exciting softwares of their choices. Next. The first problem statement of the Rookies Hackathon is a course management system. The domain for this problem statement is web development. The second problem statement of the Rookies Hackathon is a hostel management system. The domain is app development. The third problem statement of the Rookies Hackathon is a financial management system. The domain for this problem statement is machine learning and AI. This time, we have around 59 teams from Rookies Hackathon and 60 teams from Mixed Hackathon. Overall, we have more than 400 students participating in our hackathon. We are a national level hackathon with students coming from Delhi, Bangalore, Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, and many other cities. The schedule of our event is as follows. Broadcast mentoring session will take place from 11 o'clock to 12 o'clock, and industry experts will come and explain the problem statement to the team. There is a one-on-one -on -one mentoring session that is taking place from 2 p.m. where if any team has a doubt, they can approach mentors and clear, clear their doubts regarding the problem statement. At around 7 p.m., the first evaluation will take place where the teams can show the work they have done so far. After an entire night of coding, the second evaluation will take place at 7.30 in the morning. We will then announce the top four teams of each problem statement in the mixed hackathon and top five teams of each problem statement in rookies hackathon. These teams will then be given 20 minutes of time to prepare their presentation. The finding judging round will take place at 11 p.m. and will be held parallel for different problem statements. At 1 p.m., we will have the results followed by the valedictorian ceremony. We thank all our sponsors for sponsoring our event, Devfolio and Polygon for providing us with a platform to hold our hackathon. We thank Mahindra XUV700 for being our platinum sponsors. We thank Skinzy for sponsoring us and providing us with a problem statement. We thank Tata Consultancy Service for, be for being our knowledge sponsors. Geeks for Geeks and all other sponsors for being part of a hackathon. We would also like to thank Polygon for being the platinum sponsor for the Rookies Hackathon. We thank Let's Upgrade, Hover Robotics and all other sponsors for being a part of Rookies Hackathon. New World Society, the community sponsor of Rookies Hackathon, aims to house tech enthusiasts to explore, network and enjoy building practical projects for betterment of everyone. Please welcome Tanya Arora. Tanya Arora is a student of PES University and a member of New World Society. Her enthusiastic vibe makes her excited to be around and she is ever ready to help. 
I would now invite Ms. Tanya Arora from New World Society, sponsor of Rookies Hackathon, to say a few words. Uh, thank you, team. Uh, if you could please share my PPT. Okay, thank you so much. So hi everyone, good morning. I'm Tanya Arora and before I begin, I would like all of you to take 15 seconds of your time to look at the three images on your screen and see what sense they make to you. So now that your time is over, or can we go back to the previous slide, please? So now that your 15 seconds are over, I would like to explain what these three pictures stand for. So I'm sure most of us would have recognized the picture on the right, Iron Man, a hero to many, who stands for technology. You know, something big, innovative, great, are ideas which we want to achieve, but we may not have the right resources, the right time frame, or maybe we have some problems and we're not able to achieve it at this point in time. The left mode leftmost picture stands for a hand as we all can see loaded with technology raised up in the air which stands for initiation so you know you have this drive inside you wherein you want to initiate things and you want to start something new you want to do something for helping others and then there's the picture in the middle two hands joined together stands for collaboration your ability to work in a team to help others in your team and to work together and build together. And if all these pictures spoke to you, then welcome to New World Society. Uh, next slide, please. So what is New World Society? New World Society was founded by four PES alumni in 2020 with a simple goal to assist students in learning tech by allowing them to create better, collaborate together with each other and to participate in various events like hackathons, web webinars, seminars, internships, and many more. They ensure that every member within the community receives a holistic growth by promising development in soft skills and leadership skills. Uh, next slide, please. It's a virtual tech community which focuses towards engineering students who are ready to push their limits, who think outside the box, who are ever ready to innovate, create, build, and have this passion for learning. So you might be thinking that I'm a fourth year student or I'm a second year student, how do I work like this? So trust me, your ear doesn't matter, your domain doesn't matter, your branch doesn't matter. All that matters is that you have a passion to learn, to build, to create something new and to keep working hard without giving up. You love technology? Check. You love building tech rather than, you know, just dreaming about it? Check. And you actually follow your dreams and build something? Check. If you got two checks out of three, then join us today. Next slide, please. So what would your first step into New World Society be? So the first step is going to be the open community. So as you can see, we have various channels which we offer to our members like research, open source, project development, competitive coding, and we have a few more coming up. So research would be, let's say you're interested in one particular topic, but you don't really know how to go about it. So a few members with the same interests sit together, get together, rack their brains, research, and figure out and work towards a common goal. Open source is when people, you know, work together on open source projects, help each other grow. And yeah, that's about open source. Now, competitive coding. Before placements, all of us have this fear in our minds that, oh my God, we have to take the coding rounds. How do we go about it? Don't worry. This is one of the very important and helpful features of us, New World Society, wherein we train our members in the field of competitive coding. Now, since we can't always be about studies and academics. We also help our members prepare for jobs and masters. So you, you might want to go abroad for pursuing your masters in a particular domain, but you don't know how to go about it. So we guide you, we help you prepare, we help you figure out where you want to go, what your requirements are and what you should really do. We also bring in experts from the industry to talk about their 
expertise their domain and help the students to you know gain knowledge and grow more so because of the covid restrictions we haven't been able to push too much for this but as and when these restrictions are lifted we also push for offline meetups to you know help students get to know each other better uh, next slide please so what's your next step within this society it's the inner community now this is the inner circle you know like the core of everything that happens it's a close knit member of 100 people just 100 who are focused towards particular domains like AIML, ARVR, blockchain, cybersecurity, IoT, web development, and a lot more. So if you don't see your domain over here, but you wish to pursue it, then you can always ask and we're always ready to provide you with the right resources and guide you in the right direction. We also have biannual tech clusters wherein we get together, form small groups of 15 students each, and we choose products which help you stand projects excuse me which help you stand out we teach you how you can go about it we help you develop your soft skills and a lot more things now we believe that it's important to help each other grow and build together so we have this system which we call the buddy program wherein two or three students are put together in a group and they give each other feedback they teach each other and they you know go ahead together so it's not about individual growth, but it's also peers supporting each other within the community. Now, since I have been only talking about engineers, I would also like to say that we also encourage budding entrepreneurs with their startups and we help them grow ahead. So we help you with your ideation process. We help you with market valuation. We help you build your proper business model canvas. And we also help you with validation. So it's not just engineers, but we also support and promote entrepreneurs. Uh, next slide, please. So requirements, what are the requirements to become a part of New York Society? So you might be thinking, oh my God, this sounds so hard. How do I do this? Trust me, it's not that hard. There are four basic requirements which you need to have as an individual and a member of the society. It's not just about reacting. It's about being a proactive person. So, you know, if you want to do something, you have to take up the initiative. You can't just be like, oh, I want to do this. Someone is doing this. I'll react. But maybe you could be the one who could do it instead. So if you want to start a new channel, you, you can approach us and we will help you. We will help you go about it. If you want to have a gaming night, initiate it. No one is going to stop you. All you have to be is be confident and be ready. Feedback is very important. Every month or every two months, we release a feedback form wherein we encourage our students and our members to give us feedback, which helps us become better as a community. Like I said, actions speak better than your words. So you can't always just say, oh, I'm going to start this channel. Oh, I'm going to start that channel. Oh, I want this. What is important is that you actually do it. You actually stand out from the crowd by doing what you wish to do. So if you say, oh, I want to start a channel about web uh, pod development, let's say. It's not just about saying it. You can do it. Approach us. We will help you go about it. And make sure it stays active throughout. And lastly, remember to never settle. Always be willing to take, take up new technology, new opportunities to interact with others, and remember to make your impact. Uh, next slide, please. So. Since we have almost come towards the end of our presentation, we have come to the end of my presentation, actually. I would like to share with you one of my personal experiences. So before becoming a part, I became a part of this society in my first year. And I was really unsure as to how I, you know, how I should go about things. I was never into coding. I didn't know how to go about anything at all, to be very honest. But I got the right guidance under the right mentors. They taught me how I can follow my passion, how I can build how I can speak up, speak out, and actually grow. So I would like to thank Newell Society for all the opportunities which they have given me. And yeah, if you want to become a member of this society, if you want to become one with technology and you think you're a perfect fit for everything I described, remember to scan the QR code which you see on your screen. And remember, join us today. I wish all of you all the very best for your hackathon. Thank you and keep creating. Thank you, Tanya.
we are extremely glad to have new wolf society has a rookies community sponsor i would now request principal madam dr shrija oni krishnan to declare unscript hackathon 2k22 open best wishes to all the participants i hereby declare unscript 2022 open best wishes to all the participants thank you ma'am